Hey, my name is Marco. I'm a pro opera singer turned voice actor. I love talking about analyzing and discussing video game music from an emotional perspective after a decade on the stage. I am really excited because, well, that sounds really pretentious, but whatever, it's true. Here we go. Suffering leaves, suffering leaves. What I like about this beginning is uh, the plucked harp, especially. The plucked harp is a very innocent sound. Again, there's there's a sadness, suffering leaves, suffering leaves. I'm imagining, I see the image, but leaves falling down and the fall and what it means to be at your wit's end, be at the end of your rope and not really know where to turn and not really know how to proceed and and kind of feel empty. And, and, and I think that the harp does a really good job of that. And then you also have these incredibly solemn strings da, ya, da, 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 ya, that make it feel kind of like What's it all for? There's an emptiness in this piece right away. You have dissonant clash. The song feels tired to me, especially when you have this like sort of pseudo clarinet music come in. It, it really feels like a, like that. It feels like a really deep sigh. Where it's like, what's the point? It feels like a questioning song. It feels like my back is against uh, the tree. I'm slumped. I'm, I'm, it's funny because uh, I, I assume that these pieces are actually reflective of the characters we're fighting, much like Minos Prime and others. But, but actually, in a lot of ways, this feels more like they're more for about the robot and about exhaustion and, and, and wanting to give up and wanting to end. I think that the emotional cues are really interesting how it doesn't really go anywhere melodically, right? It doesn't really do anything. You have actually, at, at one point with the violins, you have a distinct clash with the upper register and with the melody in the violins. And it's like, you know, that it's, it's like, it really does feel exhausted. Yeah, and then there, and then here, there's like, there's like a sensation of like, I can never properly rest. Why can't I rest? Why do I have to continue to do this? What does this mean? What is the point of this? And all of these Ultra Kill seventh layer tracks to me have all represented a similar theme throughout all of them, which would be this feeling of decay, exhaustion, emptiness questioning what the purpose of life is. Why are we doing the things we're doing? Why does it have to be like this? There's an inherent feeling in each of these tracks as a through line of tiredness, of fatigue. Yeah. Yeah, and here you you have like a locomotive stopping. And there too, we have the flute, boom. First of all, you have the ostinato. Then you have the flute. And that is a sensation of, uh, of, 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 I don't know, there's a morbidity about it. There's something morbid about it. There's there's a sensation of, of loss, of what is this? You know what I mean? It's 
It's a very meandery track. It really doesn't have a, a start and a finish per se. It kind of just fades away and starts. And uh, I'm really excited about Danse Macabre actually because it's a very famous uh, concept. Danse Macabre is, of course, the, the devil's dance, if you will. Uh, a little bit of history for you. The, it, it, the Danse Macabre is actually a, a poem. The Dance of Death is an artistic genre of allegory of the late Middle Ages of the universality of death. The Danse Macabre consists of the dead or personification of death, summoning representatives from all walks of life to dance along to the grave. Danse Macabre has been, uh, you know, Camille Sasson, one of the most famous classical pieces, is a symphonic poem uh, written in 1874 by Camille Sasson, premiered in uh, 24th of January 1875, which is really interesting. And Wikipedia says that according to the legend, death appears at midnight every year in Halloween. Death calls forth the dead from their graves to dance for him while he plays the fiddle. There's your violin invoking death to come out of the grave. It does sound similar to the idea of what the Danse Macabre is, right? By Camille Sasson, there is this quality of like, come on, raise your dead, let's go. It's time to get up and, and dance around. You hear a little bit of that creepy uh, essence of it, especially with the, the violin is definitely invoking, uh, you know, the, the, them, the dead to rise from their graves. Something also that I'm really interested in is the fact that I, I really attribute the harp with 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 godliness and with like classical church music. And so to hear the harp in this way really gives this essence of uh, of, of religiosity, even though it's it feels like counter religious. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, especially in this violin. I, I really do picture uh, this heroic figure, uh, death, I, I would suppose, uh, or or very, very astute, like very poised, very noble type character that is present and here and and saying like, yes, I, I am, I am here. How are you? And there's a back and forth here that's going on between the robot and this very almost classy character that 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 is sort of unrelenting in its its capabilities of being fast and efficient and uh and and, and in a way charming the things around it i guess Yeah, isn't it cool too that that lick right there is incredibly confident? <laughs> Do you like how boom da 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 boom ba da da ba boom ba da da boom ba da da ba boom? It repeats so many times, which makes me think that the enemies that we're facing are unrelenting and also in mass, so they just continue to come. They do not stop. They do not surrender. They do not pass go. They do not allow you to get ahead. It's just constantly pushing towards you. I love that sort of like constant propulsion. <laughs> This, this is interesting. It's almost like a resetting. It's, 
It's very, very, very uh, resetting, very melodic, very expressive, very... Um, uh, welcome to my castle. How are you? It's time to die. You know, it's very uh, cocky confident in a way. so interesting to scale all the way back like it, like it melts away all right war without reason So the first minute of this is this industrial robotic, uh, I'm looking at a picture, obviously this giant mechanical machine. And you feel that, you feel that in the way that it sounds, right? You feel the sort of, right? You see, you feel a movement. It's, you feel it moving and you feel the essence of the robot. You hear it in the background. And then all of a sudden we switch into like this piano sonata here at one minute, which is really interesting. So it's weird because because it's so repetitive, it doesn't necessarily give me like an like an explorative like idea of what the character is about, right? But but it's interesting because it's it's very uh, because of the sped and continued rhythm. There's an inherent quality of almost like drowning in it, like it, like it's so persistent. But now we have a big shift, and I'm really interested to hear where this goes. <laughs> Yeah, I really dig this. So you have a couple things happening here. That's what we heard at the very beginning. We heard that in 715 theme two that's the world looks red i believe and what's really cool about that is that that is very emotional that is very expressive that is very like i don't want to do this i have no choice this that that whole theme that we basically i've kind of come to the conclusion of throughout this entire piece an entire layer is is that feeling of like please stop i don't want to keep doing this but then you get this beautiful ostinato piano it's this like moment of like 
like contemplation of, 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 of like seeing a brother and being like, what are you doing? How are you do? Why would you do this? There's this back and forth here of, uh, of essentially a discourse saying, come on, listen to me, understand why this has to be done. Stop doing what you're doing. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, and, and there's a somberness there. You hear how, we, as we ascend up, we kind of just this little lift and descend. That is a real quality of pain. Right? You hear that? You hear that? How that melody is somber? And then there too, because you have the drums, you have that, but over the top, you have this long sustained stuff. And again, that's too like this, like, okay, this is not stopping. We have to keep going, but also like it, it feels unbearable, but also you can't help but just be like, what am I, what am I doing? And like, what, what is happening? It really feels like a loss. That dissonance there is so crunchy. And what's really cool to me is that this really, it really, I mean, you know, the theme, the title's named War Without Reason. And I, and I think, and I think it does feel like we're, we're fighting in something that really we recognize is worthless and recognize that there's no real reason to do and recognizing the idea that why, you know, oh, oh, oh. There's like incremental like half steps that really cause that sense of like just down in the dirt, especially where the lower men are. It's so low and so like it's it's it's, it's powerful stuff actually. <laughs> You hear how like raw that is? The alarm, the klaxon. The final turn here. Yeah, these are death notes. Bra, bra, bra. 
it's like this is the final push. This is the final moment to rise up. You get the the fast fast rhythm. While underneath you get the This is the end. Got to keep pushing. So funky. And a machine comes to its end, and I think I think that I think it's really interesting because ultimately, there, they're, they're really throughout that entire piece, what we're really getting is the constant wondering of why. And it has been very interesting for me, having listened to a bunch of Ultra Kill stuff, where the other stuff was more clear, the other stuff was more obvious emotionally where the where things were going. But in this particular instance, what we're really getting is this constant questioning. This constant asking of why, this constant trying to resolve a conflict, the constant trying to understand like the complexity of purpose. Why are we doing what we're doing? It's really cool. It's really interesting. And I'm kind of stumped because it's like, it's so, it's so deep, but I, I love that it's it, essentially there's this quality of mechanical, a, a desire for consciousness, a desire for understanding. Asking questions is such a human thing to do, and there's a, a deep desperation for that. If you like this sort of stuff, there's lots more videos on the channel, lots more Ultra Kill on the channel as well. Feel free to check out more, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.